This video will demonstrate some out-of-the-box features of the open source BIM server software. After downloading the software, installing it and uh, doing a first configuration, you've added an administrator account and when you go to your BIM server URL, in this case it's bimserver.tno.nl, but your URL will be different. Just add slash admin and you have access to the administrator interface. Uh, log in with the administrator credentials that you created during the setup. Sign in. And after signing in, you'll see that there are four tabs. User settings, which gives the settings for the logged in user. Uh, server settings. Server information, which gives you some basic metrics about the system, the Java version, the assigned memory. Um, also, very important for developers, downloads to the web service interfaces, WSDL uh, protofile for, and, uh, for the protocol buffers and JSON files. Uh, SOAP interfaces in 1.2 and 1.1. 1 .1. um, also interesting for developers is when you go to slash admin slash console.html, there's a full access to all the uh, user uh, to all the uh, service interface calls of the BIM server that you're running at that moment. So uh, you can see, for example, the get all checkouts of project. You have to provide an object ID of the project. And when you fill this in, um, you'll see the example call is being changed. Uh, you can send this to the server and also see the response a little bit uh, down, the, down the page. In this case, um, there is no valid response because um, we don't have a, a valid project ID. These are all the calls in the interface. You can actually log into any kind of BIM server. Um, and, and test and evaluate these JSON calls. At this moment, unfortunately, the SOAP calls uh, are uh, viewable, uh, but you cannot test them uh, because they, uh, they're, they're quite unstable. They don't always work. So back to the administrator interface. <coughs> As you can see, the server settings uh, there's a repository server URL. Uh, this is the central reposit repository URL that is used when you want to connect to remote services. Uh, when you're not familiar with the concept of remote services, uh, please view the Federated BIM uh, concept video, uh, which is also available somewhere on our wiki and on the, on the blog. Your own site address, uh, which is also visible on the, uh, this button. SMTP server, SMTP username and password. You need this when you want to send uh, emails. Uh, BIM server doesn't have an email server built in, so you have to connect to an email server if you actually want emails to be uh, sent. Uh, the sender address, sender name, uh, port of the protocol buffers and a session timeout, which is half an hour by default. Uh, you can hide the user list for uh, logged in non-administrator users. Um, you have the ability to cache output files. So every time a download is done, uh, the, the, the file is generated on the fly from the database. Um, but when you have the option to cache output files on, this is only done one time and it is stored locally on the, on the BIM server as a file. Uh, so it will speed up performance. Uh, if you want to clear those files from the server, there's a clear cache button here. Uh, merging. Uh, Check-in merging is, can, can be enabled um, if you only want to add data to a revision instead of replacing all the previous uh, data. Uh, this, uh, this option um, has to be checked and during the check-in you have a, a check-in merge uh, functionality. This is uh, because of the nature of IFC a very difficult algorithm so by default it's turned off. Uh, generate geometry on check-in. Uh, the generation of the geometry is done by an IFC engine, um, uh, which is a plugin of BIM Server. So BIM Server does not generate geometry, uh, but it calls the 
uh, plugin to generate geometry. It will store the result of the generated geometry, the triangles, in the BIM server database. Allow users to create top-level projects. Uh, allow self-registration. Uh, send a confirmation email after registration. Send, send an email on every new revision. So every project member will, will receive an email every time a new uh, version is checked into a project and the whitelist domains uh, for connectivity and security. Then there's the database migrations. Uh, this is um, for developers that want to update the database to a new version of BIM server. Plugins. This is a list of all the plugins that are available in this installation of BIM Server. And as you can see, we have the deserializers, model checkers, model compares. Um, as a server administrator, you can, um, you can allow all users to, uh, to make use of this plugin or not. And as you can see, at this moment, there's two render engines, uh, the uh, native implementation of the IFC engine from TNO and RDF, and the IFC OpenShell engine from Thomas Kynan, IFC OpenShell. So uh, this lists all the plugins and as an administrator also the internal services and uh, graphical user interface plugins. As an administrator you can um, hide or uh, allow these plugins for users. And there's the web modules. This is what we call the graphical user interface plugins. Uh, at this moment, BIM Views is installed as a plugin on this server. Uh, the Bootstrap BIM Admin is this interface we're looking at right now. And the default web GUI is the, um, the screen that only shows the server and the, and the status. You can uh, pick which one you want to, uh, uh, want to show by default when you go to your BIM server URL. Um, then there's the extended data schemas. Um, when you want to see more about this, uh, please look also at the Federated BIM concept video, which is probably on our blog or on the wiki. Uh, you can add the allowed data schemas for extended data to come into BIM server. We have some predefined on the repository server, extended BIM server talk, which is named previously. Then as model checkers, um, Again, same concept as the extended data schema. Um, there are some model checkers online that you can add and allow your users uh, to be used on the server, or you can add your own, uh, which is Java code. Uh, I'll explain later where the model checkers come in. Um, then there's the getting started page. Uh, again, a link to the console, um, a wiki, the support forum and one frequently asked question. For user settings, so these are the settings for the logged in user, in this case administrator, but every user has these user settings. There's a service token, um, which I'll explain in a different video. There's the serializers that are enabled for this user and the default serializer when you export um, data from the BIM server to a file. These serializers which is import also enabled <coughs> and BIM server will look at the file uh, extension to, uh, to pick the default one. Object IDMs which, um, 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 which can configure the way queries are being done in BIM server. For example when you query walls some people only want walls, some people want walls with openings um, and the way the, the IFC schema is structured, uh, it's very difficult to have a, a default behavior of queries. So in this case, uh, we made this uh, into a plugin. But normally, uh, this won't. Uh, this doesn't have to be changed. Render engines. These are the plugins in BIM Server that that actually render geometry and store the triangles, the tessellated triangles, into the server. Uh, the TNO engine series, which is now owned by RDF, is, uh, is in there by default. Uh, but in the next releases, probably IFC OpenShell will be the default render, which is also open source. So these are the plugins that actually render geometry at check-in when you have that option enabled. Then there are the query engines um, in version 0 0.1. And 
<coughs> and 0 0.8 we had a, uh, our own Java query engine uh, which is not preferable and then BIMQL came along and uh, we turned uh, query engines into uh, plugins and now BIMQL is the default plugin for uh, for queries in BIMServer. Model mergers um, actually the, when you download uh, a main project that has sub projects uh, at that moment um, all the data from the sub project is is retrieved from the database and um, um, and merged into one single file. Uh, it's first merged into one single Eclipse modeling framework, a meta model, and then turned into a file for download. Uh, the way those sub project, the way the data from that sub projects is being uh, merged, um, is is done by these plugins. Uh, you can do it based on the GUIDs. You can based on uh, on IFC name or uh, not look at any intelligence and just uh, throw in all the data into one file. Um, it, every user has his own preferences for merging and um, also developers want to uh, easily fine-tune this so that's the reason why it's been turned into a plugin. Same goes for model compare engines. Sometimes you want to compare on GUID, sometimes you want to com compare on IFC name. Uh, these two are both enabled and you can pick a default one and the internal services that are allowed for this user. So that is an overview of, um, of uh, BIM server administrating. Now uh, let's log into the normal user interface. In this case, uh, as we saw, uh, the BIM views plugin is enabled. So this is uh, because I'm an administrator. I also in the normal interface get the server settings um, and even a, a testing button to test some um, to do some some testing of the stability of BIM server. We use this for our internal development. But I also have a dashboard of what happened on this server. I've got a list of projects. <coughs> I've got a list of users. Uh, I can add users, etc., uh, etc. Et so um, let's look at this at a project. For example, uh, this one. As you can see, this is one main project with three sub-projects. There are three revisions in this main project that are automatically generated because there is data checked in into the sub-project. So as you can see, the sub-project architect has one revision checked in by administrator five days ago. And the same for the construction part and the MAP part. And every time something changes in one of the sub-projects, a new revision is generated on the fly by the system on the main project. So as you can see, uh, the architect checked something in, uh, the construction engineer checked something in, and uh, uh, the overall generated uh, main project uh, has an has a, um, increasing number of objects. And then uh, also the MEP engineer checked something in. And this is the total of the the merged file. When you download this file, you will get um, the state of all the sub-projects at this time when this revision was created. We call this a virtual revision because um, internally it doesn't really hold data. It's only an endpoint that says at this moment, this revision, um, this is the status of all the sub-projects in this project. So when you download this, BIM server knows which concrete revisions it has to get from the database, merges that revisions uh, based on the uh, selected merging uh, plugin, and uh, you'll get that as a, as, a file, as a file of your choice. So you, you can see the serializer plugins, which we also just saw. Um, you can add services. There's a different video explaining more about services. I have a, just Google for the federated BIM concept. Um, you can do checkouts. Uh, these are the services available and uh, listed for this project, which are none at this moment. You can do some query engines, uh, extend the data that comes back from the remote services or internal services is listed here, which is none. You can browse the model. Uh, this is a complete, pretty good and uh, stable browser. It gives you all the uh, data from the database. 
the users that are allowed on this project. Model checkers. Um, when you add a model checker, uh, for example this one which is just a very simple example that always passes, uh, when you list this uh, model checker for this project, every time a new revision is checked in through this box, every time um, this uh, the data that is checked in is being checked against these uh, uh, model checking rules and the data will only be stored in the database uh, when it is valid against these model checks. So we built this in for a lot of clients that wanted safety and security so you can really predefine some rules that your data has to be valid against before it is actually stored in the database. And then there's a log uh, what happened on this project, what happened by users, what happened by uh, remote services, etc. <coughs> There's the show in 3D button, which actually uh, opens a new window to test on BIM Server with the log, which opens a, a very old um, a version of BIM Server. So uh, I think this is the first introduction of what you'll see uh, when you get BIM Server. Again, when you want to use this graphical user interface, you have to install the BIM Views. Uh, plugin. Uh, you'll find more information about that on our website. Thanks for watching and um, feel free to uh, have a look at support.opensourcebim.org for our uh, support forum uh, both on, uh, on uh, BIM server as the other open source projects we have. Thank you.